The drink, the drink, the drink, we're clicking to the environment, we're clicking to the environment, we're clicking to the environment. Yes. And we're back. Wait. And we're back. Okay, cool. Just saw you share the transition went through. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, so we're back. We're talking about lead, and we're with Mark, the awesome guy, Ushak, and he is a, a lead advocate in sustainability science. So welcome back, Mark. Thank you. I'm so glad to have you on the show. Though this is awesome. I'm glad that you invited me. I think this. I think this is so cool. Dude, I like. Ever since I've been uh, doing this, like, I've been just reaching out to, like, everyone I could possibly think of, especially from Kane, just because, like, Kane really sparked my uh, interest in sustainability and environmental science, so, and I met a lot, a lot of awesome people along the way, including yourself, that's why I have you on the show. Cool. So, um, but anyway, so, getting back to what we were talking about before, which was, you know, LEED certified buildings, um, I want to actually just, like, backtrack a little bit because we were talking about wineries and everything and that actually sparked an idea in my head and I believe the winery that I went to um going to Vermont for a family vacation was uh I want to say it was Shelburne uh Vineyard it's in Shelburne in Vermont <laughs> It would make but, sense, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, yeah, they are lead certified as well as um, another winery that just kind of came up, um, Boy Boyden Valley Winery. They're also okay. lead certified. Okay. So wait, I just want to double check because when I typed it in, they, it says that they became a lead certified. However, it doesn't say like you know if they you know, came up to bronze or just the, the, which tier they're at. So yeah, lots of times you can find uh, information out on the USGBC uh, website about a lot of the different right. buildings and you can actually do a little demographic search on there. And, and that's only if they publish the publicize the or public uh, publish the building on there. Most of them do. Most of them are pretty proud of, of, of making even certific even just certified, and um, it is very good exposure because there's a lot of people that um, that do look at that database um, um, to see, uh, you know, who's doing what, who's becoming certified, what type of buildings and what type of organizations are going that route. Um, and I think there is um, a, uh, a a good part of the general public that does look for that because uh, you know because they know what it is and they want to support that type of uh, of uh, uh, organiza uh, that organization and that type of construction um, um, I consider those people like-minded people um, you, you know um, I, I, there's a winery here in um, New Egypt New Jersey called Loritas and it's a beautiful beautiful winery and they have a I have yet to go there Oh my God! I want to go there so bad. <laughs> their build, their building is is spectacular. And a couple of years ago, we haven't been there in a couple of years. One because of the COVID, but we usually went out there on a Saturday or a Sunday because uh, uh, there's a, a a very a two piece band that my wife knows. Uh, uh, the 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 one one member of the band, and uh, she was a professor at Georgian Court University where my wife went to school, and. We kind of stayed in touch. She kind of stayed in touch with them through email and, and where they're performing, and they're friends with the owner of Lorita. So occasionally we would go there and listen to their listen to their music, and they, they awesome. have a very they have a very good mix of music. But the building, and I got to talk to the owner one day, was actually three barns that were deconstructed and then reconstructed on the site there. And he didn't go for any 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 lead certification. And at the time, since it was basically a startup winery, said it was just you know it just raised the costs up a little bit more than what they had. But you go into this building; it's all reclaimed lumber. The entire thing is reclaimed lumber, 
and oh, it's it, cool. it, 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 it go out it, look they're wa- i'm not a wine drinker my wife does drink wine we like their wine and sometimes we go out you know just for a little snack at lunchtime or something like that but right. when, again before before covid came in there um some of their food is pretty good they have some pretty good weekend stuff that we've been to like uh like uh, the 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 the, the uh, food trucks and, and things like that. So, and they have right. they have salt they have solar tracking out there for certain things. And they're not an organic winery, but 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 the building itself is very very cool. And I think uh, I think you would enjoy it. I, I I really do. I'm always in awe when I go out there and look at. It. <laughs> I, I really am because it's so cool that we can we can deconstruct some of our older buildings, and 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 do something to them and bring them back to life. Uh, in, right. yeah, in, yeah. In, in, a, in a new way and in a, in a new design and so that building is still living with us when we think about that and just it just saves so much energy as far as what we talk about embodied energy we're, we're not cutting down forests we're not uh, we're not we're not we don't have that transportation yeah, we're not, we're not like creating new uh uh plains fields if you will no. to like build more up you know they keep on doing that in like every part of jersey but anyway <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 they do any any little piece that's of wood that's not totally certified at all is it <laughs> yeah, yeah no, no we in new jersey here we like that we'd like to just you know rip down everything we possibly can and put something else up and then make you plant trees after you get all finished instead of using a method called smart growth you, you know where you can leave trees and you can you don't have to worry so much about that because when we when we go in and we do this type that type of construction the, the, you, you know the when, when we take out a you know five or six or maybe even even 10 or 20 acres maybe even more so i mean if somebody going in there and say oh, all right mr squirrel you, you have to move we're going to be taking down your house here okay i had a feeling you were going that route <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know you know we're we're not thinking about the ecosystems that are in there that we can actually work around we really can work around it but i mean if you think about it and like to i'm sorry to cut you off but that's okay if it's like to kind of put it into a different perspective than you know the typical perspective that everyone portrays it's like you know all right we're knocking down trees blah blah whatever like i mean not that i'm saying that's good or anything it's kind of bad because trees help us breathe oxygen but different perspective i actually just kind of came up with and got inspired by is like um and i was uh what was i watching um well besides shout out to the movie uh the lorax with zach efron that's such a great film or okay. an- animated film but um all right so the perspective i'm trying to portray is like say you know you have a house right you know say your house right there and it's like all of a sudden just i know we're just you know bigger people just come and just demolish it and then rebuild something back up and you're like hey i was i was i'm living here like what the hell like you're not gonna stand for that like you're gonna you're gonna try to fight back or you know talk it out or duke it out somehow so it's like picture your your favorite home that you live in right now you know you probably have if you're a child watching this uh episode or just a regular adult you know you put a lot of work and effort to, you know, upgrade your house or, you know, put, modify your house some way, shape or form. Right. And that costs a lot of money that you're pouring into it. You know, you're yeah. not, it's not like you're asking for a loan. You might be, but either way, you're still paying for it. So it's like yes. all of a sudden someone just kind of comes through, demolishes your house, you know, bulldoze your house down. And then they like put up something bigger, maybe shinier, whatever the case may be, something different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like, wow, I just pissed away all this money because you, you know, big boy over here try to, you know, take over my space. Like, what the hell? Well, well, so I, like, I, I, I don't think they understand that our existing structures, besides having a lot of character, also store a lot of embodied energy. And, you know, we, there's over 120 million homes in the United States and, and probably more than 50% of them, we'll say 50% of them were built maybe pre-World War II. And then, then of course you had a huge a boom of construction after World War II when the war was finally sure over. That I'm living in the house that I'm living in. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, even, even my it's house, you know, we, we live in a townhouse, and I've done a lot of improvements to improve the energy efficiency of the house um, to make it more sustainable, as, as sustainable as I can to the limits that I can um, right. on here. 
but if we can do that with all our homes, um, you're, you're never going to you're never going to stop the person who has plenty of money who wants your piece of property because it's the property that they're looking at. They're not looking at your house. It's not their taste. It's not their style. And it's uh, and 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 sometimes um, these, these these people are 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 in the position where they don't have to worry about their energy costs. But that's not really what it's about. It's not about whether you can afford your energy costs or not. It's it, it, it's it's about you know you, you, why do you have to waste it? There, there, exactly. You you can still live very very sustainably. And, 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 and just like you always do, but making something that's a lot more energy efficient. It, 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 you could just change all the light bulbs in your house to LED light bulbs, and right there you're saving huge amounts of money, quite honestly, on your electric bill. Oh, absolutely. Like my, my lamp right there, not my kitchen, but my lamp right over here. Yeah. Let's see if I take this. That lamp right Yeah, sure. There. I see it on your dresser right there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right on top. That's LED, uh, yeah. LED light bulb, and actually, it's doing pretty well right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's 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 so easy with the technology that we have today to take uh, all our existing stuff and 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 upgrade it uh, to something that's you know very energy efficient, and it doesn't make a difference where you 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 you, you fall on the economic scale. The thing is, do you have to be wasteful? And the answer is really no. You don't have to be wasteful. You you can live very comfortably, I mean, and still have and still have everything you want. It's, it uh, and a lot of this usage is is really based on behavior and attitude. And and I, I think we uh, as a society need to look at that. We need to think about that. And and. My wife and I live, you know, very well. I mean, we're, we're middle class America. We 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 our energy bills are low, which really gives me a little more economics to do something else. Mm. So I, I agree with you that we we we, should, we don't really need to go and tear all this stuff down and build and, and build really a, don't. build a McMansion. Exactly. You know? I mean, there like, I mean, for example, my my apartment is definitely not energy efficient by any means. <laughs> like, I mean, I live in a, I live in a, a old, very old Victorian style home and it's split up into apartments. So I really have one of them, but like, um, a lot of the features here are not like upgraded or anything. They're, everything's very old here. Sure. And sure. it's like, I mean, I don't, especially if like you're just like you, you're, you're a homeowner, like you definitely don't want to be literally throwing money out the window in terms of, you know, paying for your gas, electric utilities, whatever the case may be. That's it's right. like, if you, you know, kind of upgrade little bit by little bit, you'll actually see your, your, your energy consumption and your energy bills start to go down. I mean, yeah. it's not going to be like dramatic, like overnight or, you know, in a matter of a week. But like, if you look at it in the course of say a month, you could see all of a sudden your energy is like all the way up here. Then towards the end of the month, yeah, it'll be down right. here. And, and, and it doesn't, it doesn't change your lifestyle, how you live. It really it, doesn't. It, it really, it really doesn't. I mean, um, and and that's something that we really need to to teach people, to educate people, and to yeah. uh, you know let them know that you can still have if you want your McMansion, fine. Your but it doesn't have to be an energy <laughs> you know it doesn't have to be an energy hawk. I mean, and, hey, and, some people are into McMansions, you know. Well, they, you know, they are. are I'm into not, I'm tiny not. houses. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> like, are tiny tiny houses. Are, yeah, right, right. I was actually watching my my students were watching something um, just on um, yesterday, and and this one gentleman out, and I think it was Ohio or someplace out there. He, he had a, he bought a tiny house basically. And he no, they lived in like mobile sheds. <laughs> well, this one, this one's yeah, right. They are right. That's what they look like. But this one, this one was stationary. I mean, it, it was okay. a small house, maybe six, maybe seven hundred square feet. Maybe I, I think it was someplace around there. But what he did was he, 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 since it was old and he, he gutted it. 
he made it so energy efficient that he doesn't even need, doesn't even need a heating system in the house because that's how wow. energy efficient he made it. And it really has to do with what kind of coat you're going to wear. So what I'm talking about is that outside thermal envelope, how much insulation I can put into there. It's just like you going outside on a really cold day in January or February, you're going to layer yourself up and you're going to put all these clothes on you to maintain your body temperature. So you, well, yeah, you, I don't want to be comfortable. freezing my butt off. <laughs> right. Well, the same thing with your house. You don't want your house to, to be that way either. You want to be able to, you know, build that exterior envelope of the house and insulate it and air seal it the best you possibly can. And, and LEED does address that in, 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 in their homes, LEED for homes, they do address that. And so does, so does another certification called Passive House address all of that. And the, the, their, their uh, idea is to, is to make that, that, that exterior envelope very, very energy efficient. It, use thermal mass. And the more mass you can have on the outside, the less, equipment you need on the inside yeah really you know uh, you know a, a whole a hair dryer or incandescent light bulb if you choose to put that could probably heat your house because that house is so so tight and and that's really where we have to go this guy didn't have to tear down this house and the same thing there's a company up in vermont since you're mentioning you know uh, the wineries in vermont there was a company up there i can't think of the name of them off the top of my head but they were actually building very, very energy efficient trailers. Because a lot of people in Vermont still live in, 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 in trailer type homes. Right, yeah, yeah. And these are, these are wood structures, they're not the aluminum structure. And they had a very good program and then they made these things super, super energy efficient because the people who were able to purchase these things and, and some of them did have, uh, there was incentives for them to buy them and some government assistance to get these things because they know that if they moved into something like this here, is that their energy costs were going to be negligible. There's going to be almost nothing there. And so if we can do that, then that gives more money in the pocket of me or you or, or, or somebody else that maybe they can afford health insurance. Maybe they can afford a better diets, such as the organic foods or more, more organic and natural foods and stay away from some of the chemical additives and what have you. This gives these people an opportunity uh, to increase their, 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 their lifestyle and their livelihood because they're not taking a third of their income and, and, and paying for energy bills. So even LEED does that. We, when we look at LEED and we look at how LEED addresses the energy, addresses the uh, environment as far as the indoor environment, I mean, what type of things are you putting in your house that could outgas and, and, and be contaminate, contaminate the inside of your house. We, we have to think about those materials and stuff that are going in there. And that's one thing that's good about LEED. They really do look at that. And now LEED is starting to work with other rating systems that are addressing the, the same thing. And also too, we have to think about the site of where this house or building is gonna be because we're always gonna have new construction always going to have new construction. We're not going to get away from new construction, but, you know, can we do something where we're not damaging the ecosystem around that area where that building or home is going to be? How do we, how do we fit our built environment into the natural environment? And I think that's the key for all of us to understand because we are part of nature, we are part of the environment, and we should not be here to conquer the environment, we should be here to live in harmony with the environment. And if we can do that by using LEED or, or whoever you might want to use, LEED, like I said, is the one that, that is most, recly, most recognized in the industry, then we know that when we do something like that, that, that we're now building to the environment and not building on the environment or to replace the environment. And I think that's the mindset that we really have to have. And I think uh, we do that with education. And, and the more we can educate people uh, on this, I think the more people understand that, hey, this is, this is not brain surgery. This is actually pretty simple to do. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I just have some, have some thought behind it, and so um, that's where I come from. That's where I come off from. That's that's what I think we should do, and I don't. I, I think there's a lot of very like-minded people out there, like you and I, who think the same way about this. We just need to get more people. Mark, I 
think you just hit the nail on the head like five times in the last like 30 seconds. Because <laughs> 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 like you're just like, you, like, pretty much what you just said was just spot the hell on. Good. Like, Thank you. No, I, I totally agree with it just because like, I mean, what I, what I would like to add is like, I know anyone that's viewing this right now, they're thinking about their financial situation, just like how you mentioned. And it's like, it goes for, you know, uh, making your home or building, you know, establishment lead certified, you know, energy efficient or, or cutting down your bills by building a, uh, uh, installing a solar array on top of your, your house. So you could, you know, plug into the sun instead of into the utility company. It's like, yeah. the upfront cost might actually be like you know might put a little hole in your your funding but in the long run it will pay you back oh there's no question about that like yeah. like like and it may not be like you know instant which i will guarantee you it's not going to be totally instant but over say you install a solar array or just upgrade your house to be more lead certified within the next year or two or even maybe five i'm not totally uh educate on the whole lead spectrum but even in terms of solar array systems it'll pay you back definitely it'll, you know it'll what, pay you back pretty quickly yeah no you're right you're right and depending on the type of upgrades that you're going to do uh, right. on, on a build structure um mm -hmm. you want to look for something within a 10-year payback period uh, to give you a really great example, when the Empire State Building went under uh, reconstruction and really it was under a, really an energy efficient uh, um, upgrades to the Empire State Building, um, it was um, the Rocky Mountain Institute was one of their consultants on that there. They spent and I, I, I'm going to throw the number out there, and I think this was the number. They spent over $100, $100 million uh, going through energy upgrades to the Empire State Building. And it might have been more, but and there's a, there, is a, there is a very good case study on it. On it on that. Um, their payback period ended up to be like seven, seven and a half years on that $100 million investment. So, you know, just, just think about that. So that's it's, really quick, isn't it? it's very quick on, on, on something like that, but that's Ooh. how much energy they were able to save. And, and that's what it comes down. So when, when we do this, when we figure out um, these, uh, the energy savings, we, we really do look at the, the return on investment and we look at the savings to investment ratio because it really is all about the math and it's really all about the money. And, you know, oh, yeah. what am I going to invest? To what am I going to get on a return? And, and it's like no different than anything else. If you're going to go into the stock market and you're going to be putting a million dollars into the stock market, you want to know how long your investment uh, is going to uh, give me a return. And again, the stock market is a little bit more, a little bit more of a chance, more of a gamble. But in my building, it, it, it's not, it's not a gamble. Uh, because it has to do with how much energy I'm going to be saving, and that savings turns out to be an economic value. Yeah, and, and that and that's what it is. And if you're going to borrow that kind of money, the, the the bank is going to ask you. The bank's going to do the numbers too, because they're not going to they're not going to give you money where you're not going to get a return on investment, and they're not going to give you money where they're not going to get a return on investment. So that's where it comes down to so it is about economics it is about saving the planet It is about reducing your carbon footprint but it's about economics as well too and and, and it, it all has to go hand in hand with one another uh and and it, and it works it, it really does work so instead of promoting you know oh everything's got to be green well no it doesn't have to be green it has to have an economic value to it, just like nature has an economic value to it. You can't keep taking from nature because at one point there's going to be nothing left out there and it's going to have a zero economic value to it. Well, yeah, I mean, just, just like how I, that you bring up a good point is like, just like how I mentioned uh, last segment of, you know, mentioning a couple movies, the Lorax, literally that, that is an example of what you just said is where, 
you start to, you know, kill off a certain, you know, organism or material in a given area, you can only chop, in this case, in the Lorax, it's all trees. Like, you can only chop down so many trees until you literally have none, none of them left. Sure. You know, it's, sure. it becomes more of an exhaustible uh, uh, resource. Yeah, well, you know, and that's a great point because we have done that, Ted. We have gone into areas of the world where we've cut down all the trees and had huge environmental degradation. Mm -hmm. And recently I was watching an episode I should, on... I should do it. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I should totally do like a podcast episode of just like relating sustainability to movies, like the, the message that some movies... Oh, oh God, my God. Oh, my God. You, you know what? I'm going to do that. It, you know what? It, it would be really great because there's some great documentaries and movies right? out there that you could do. Oh my God! Most definitely, most definitely. Ooh. You know, it's, it, it's funny it's, you say that because it's gonna be like my next couple of episodes, just like oh, oh, I, I think that, I think that's so cool because one of the things we have to look at at Ted is we 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 can't always look at the the negative part of our environmental no. degradation. We no. have to look at those people who are out there who are. Who are who are making strides? Who are making right. progress? In a positive, um, right. To 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 rejuvenate our environment, to reconstruct what we need, and to live to to have and to live with nature. And you, you can know, be part of the movement, damn it! <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, and you know what? And it it, it it doesn't really have to be a movement. It, ah. it really doesn't. But if it is a movement, we have to. It has to be inclusive. It has to be everyone. And, and, oh, and we, 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 you, you know that, what? That, that's Mark. That's not even a question. That's not even really a question if it's inclusive. That's already implied. That, yeah. Right. Exactly. 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 And, and you know what? And, and I'm showing my students that I'm not showing them all the degradation. I show them degradation. Yes, I do. But then I go back and I show them the same thing, where it has been where we have reestablished and, and rejuvenated areas. Your no, idea, I, you, you, you know, your, your example of, the, of cutting down all the forests, there was, a, uh, I was watching PBS, I'm a big, big PBS uh, a fan, and there was an episode that I watched recently where there was a very rural area of China where the, 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 the residents of that rural area, they decimated every single tree that was out there. There was nothing left for acres and acres and acres. And the, the oh. erosion, it just everything went into the Yellow River and on the nutrients and they lost everything. So the government stepped in and the government stopped everything. They told all the people you couldn't farm, you couldn't ranch, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that. But then the government went and hired all these people. And within a 10 year, I think it was less than 10 year, this entire area that was degraded because of the people who really had no clue what they were doing, was now replanted and reach and, and, and been rejuvenating itself. Oh, the return of the return of the return of the biodiversity, the animals, the insects, and everything that, that goes along with that. And now these people have a livelihood because oh, they've oh. learned to farm and to be sustainable in their methods of, of working the land. They, they they learned how to like you know really. Uh... Um, regulate how they were living. Yeah, yeah. Another great episode, and, and, and I'm going back to China because they seem to be, I mean, we can go through the Mississippi Valley here, the Mississippi River watershed here, and, and look at those areas there. Um, we really can. We can go look up at the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the areas up in the Pacific Northwest where we have moved, removed dams, especially on the, uh, on the um, L.Y. River, um, because it was, it, it was decimating the Chinook salmon population. Oh, yes. I I think it was either in your class or in, um, um, oh my God, who, it was either in your class or I want to say, oh no, I think it was in Ben Spinelli's class who I'm trying to get on the show too. Okay. Because we were doing uh, environmental law in his class and we were watching how, and correct me if this is the, the video that you're thinking of, is where there's a bunch of dams um, in a, a bunch of rivers and there, there was actually a construction company that actually went and removed them because they were actually de uh, uh, devastating the, the, the fish population, the ecosystem there. 
it might it might be the same one. It took 35 years to have these two dams removed uh, on the Elwha River up in Washington State, which really runs from the Sound all the way up into deep into Olympic National Park, and okay. it decimated it the salmon population, <laughs> and it, 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 it's 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 causing harm to the pod of. Um, workers that live up there. The, and if you remember right. back in 2000, oh, I think it was 17, where it, it was actually on the news where this mother uh, 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 was pushing around her dead calf for 17 days because of the connection uh, that, the, the, that these animals have with their offspring and um, how the pod stayed with her. And, wow. and, and one of the things that was, was actually brought out when we removed the dam, when the dam was removed in 2014, mm -hmm. well, now the Chinook, it actually replenished the area, and especially at the delta where the river empties in um, into the sound um, by, you know, by, by dispersing its nutrients and now allowing the Chinook salmon, which is an endangered species, to swim 60 to 70 miles upstream to start spawning again. So wow. they're, looking, they're looking at a population of you know, 8,000 to 10,000 Chinook salmon, which is still about 10 times less than what it used to be. But the Chinook salmon, it, the Chinook salmon is, 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 is one of the only staples that the orcas in this area eat. And if there's a reduction in this food source, there's a reduction in the ecosystem, yeah. and someone, and someone, and someone, and someone unfortunately has to pay for that. So, you know, we have done environmental harm, and 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 it's taking a long time to recognize our harm. But you know, Mother Earth is a is a magnificent system that can yeah. that can that can fix itself. We just have to help it, and, yeah. and we and, and we have to recognize that. And I think that we can definitely help it by improving our existing building stock, our existing homes and, and buildings like that to make them reduce their energy consumption 50, 60, 70 percent. We, we can do that. We have this technology. It's do you, not do you not think that's too far fetched? No, I do not think it's too far fetched at all. I do not. Just in my house alone. Okay, well, we have a we have a townhouse. It was built thirty something years ago. It's 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 conventionally constructed. It's nothing spectacular. It really isn't. My wife and I made it a beautiful home, but as I remodeled areas of the house, I was at insulation where I could. I did air sealing. I changed the windows. I had to keep the I had to keep the the same style of window. So that's not as energy efficient. But I tried to upgrade them as energy efficient as I possible. We yeah. reduced our energy consumption. And I just put a new air conditioning and heating system in, so I don't have the new data. But before that went in, we reduced our energy consumption by 30%. Wow. Okay. And, um, and so like, made, our, made our house you know, that much more comfortable. Now that I have a new better performance and, and better efficiency on my air conditioning and heating system, which really just put in last week. So I, I don't have any numbers. And it's going to take me a year to get those numbers. So this time next year, I should have some good numbers on how, how more efficient and more, what kind of savings am I going to get? I'm hoping to get to that 40 to 50% savings in my energy consumption in my existing house. And, wow, awesome. my, and, my, and my investment is not that bad. It really is not that bad at all because I have to watch my money. I mean, I, you know, it's my wife and I, she's retired. I, I, I adjunct at a, at, a, at a few schools and I have my consulting with the, the, the building up in New York City. So, you know, uh, uh, I have to think about that. I have to think of what my means are. And if I, if I can reduce that energy consumption in my house by making these improvements, well, that's more money for my, my IRA or my 401k or whatever it might be, 401a, 401b or C, whatever they might be. I have more money in my pocket for my retirement to make my life easier. And then if I go and we sell this house, I could actually show people, well, this is my energy bills right here. I, I, have, I have a program. I have a computer program that I run this stuff through, and I can show you. Here's my, here's my last five years of energy bills. My house is very energy efficient. So when they move in, when that time comes, they're going to say, <laughs> wow, 
well, this house like, really isn't that expensive to operate, is it? I said, no, it's not. It's not. And that's what, that's what I'm trying to achieve. And I think everybody can achieve that. To have 180 units in this complex that we live in, they're all energy hogs. Every single one of them, no one thinks about it at all. Why not? That's the first thing that comes to my mind is how can I reduce my energy? Your neighbors to do that. Uh, some of them believe it and some of them don't. I, oh. I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't push it. You know, it's what they. If if they ask me, yeah, then I tell they them. They want to do it. They want to do it, but if they're you know shush and. Yeah, I I I don't bother. That you know, if they they see what I'm doing, they ask me questions. I tell them. If not, I just let it go. You know, because it's really right. just for it's just for us. I'm more than happy right. to share anything that I do with them. I, I really would. Um, but you know, I, I have one gentleman who they're, they're just selling their house there and he's a really cool guy. He's a fisherman, always, always, always goes out fishing on the Jersey shore here and always gives me fish. Yeah. And he put a new heating system because they're, again, they're getting, they were, they actually just sold their house. So, uh, about six, seven months ago. So I said, why didn't you put something more high efficient? And he goes, I don't care. I'm selling the house. I, oh, okay, fine. And that's the way I left it. My thought is there, well, if I have a higher energy efficient system in the house, it's going to be a little bit more attractive when someone says, when someone comes in and you show them your energy bills and say, wow, gee, my house uses 30% less energy than the house next door to me. And they're going to say, uh, well, there, there's something I never thought about before. That's not bad. Right. Yeah. So that's how I think about that. And, 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 and I think the same way, if I'm going to do major renovation work, I, I, I would look at lead. I would look at passive house. I, I, I would look at some of the other rating systems to see, can I achieve that level of efficiency and, and sustainability? And I'm going to have to say that, yeah, put your mind down to it. Yeah, you can do it. And it's going to cost you money, but I'm going to get that return back. And, and that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for my investment to return to me. And it, 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 every single time it works. <laughs> we don't do this. We don't do this without the numbers. You don't do it without the numbers. No, of course not. Yeah, yeah. Wow, uh, that, well, that's, that's awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> These are why we meet up when I go and get my own house, like become an actual homeowner. I'm gonna be looking at all this stuff now. I may have to even uh, call you up and be like, "Hey, Mark, can you come over?" Oh, here? you know what? Uh, you know what? Anybody that wants to call me up and and uh, and and pick my brain. I have no problem sharing anything that I know. I, I, I really don't because that's what it's about. You, 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 if you have something, you should share it. If you know something, you should share it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and that's just the way I look at it. Uh, I mean, you, you know, I, 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 I'm not going to get rich. I don't plan on getting rich. But if I can help someone improve um, their, themselves, their house, and their family, then to me, that's satisfying. Sweet, man. Well, shout out to you. Cheers to you, man. Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right, well, <clears throat> so this whole entire episode of lead talk and a little bit of politics here and there, um, we come to, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to leave these two for the next segment. So Okay. That last segment will be these two. So, all right, guys, stay tuned for the next next segment. Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching the Drink Sustainability. <laughs> Warning: As you watch the show, be sure to clink at your own risk. Drinks may not appear the way that they seem.